Welcome everyone to the 2023 Daisyland Open sponsored by Wyatt Works and presented by Greatest Media Team. Uh, my name is Connor Spillman. I am the TD for the event and in the booth with me we have the lefty himself, uh, Sam Henderson. Sam, how you doing? Great, thanks for having me. Excited to uh, watch some frisbee. Absolutely, and I uh, happen to see your name up here. It looks like we're going to be watching you play this course. Um, I know for a fact that you have you know these courses very well, so you must be pretty excited for this event. Yeah, it's a card pretty much full of locals with uh, Nate Hartman, a Daisy local, Rivas. He's a traveling man, but certainly uh, very uh, known around the parts. And uh, another lefty, which I'm pretty pumped to be on the card uh, with Lawrence Warwick. So it's going to be a fun, fun watch. Always exciting. We have uh, a couple lefties uh, here, and this is also a Sunstein series event. So shout out to uh, Sunstein and all that they do for the uh, disc golf community. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's get this uh, show on the road. We have uh, a really star-studded card for you guys, just like Sam mentioned. We are here at hole one, par four, 373 feet. We're looking at two gaps here there is one on the right which would be the uh the, the treacherous play going over ob you can go to the left and play it safe uh we're going to see these guys take a couple of routes over here and uh yeah there's going to be uh sort of uh sparks to start right at hole one so we'll see we right at the start we'll have Franklin, that's right nate hartman's going to be leading us off he's going to take the right route nate uh, yeah nate shot an 11 down at borderland which is a pretty awesome score yeah, I've had the luxury to play with this guy um, many times over the course of three to four years, and he has everything in his pocket. He can right. do backhand, forehand. Next He's going to be fun to watch. Norton, yep, and it's hard to see from this camera angle, but his drive well. did make it across Sam the water. Anderson. So he will be looking up at a pretty easy birdie. Oh, and here you are, Sam, going right up that Mando gap, just like I was talking about. Yeah, I thought it leaked a little bit to the right, but it got across. Third it was pretty close, so Rounding always happy from. with that everywhere <laughs> and we have yeah, the traveling man Rivas himself Marcons Craig Rivas Marcons Craig guy who has helped put together this event for years yep rocking his uh beast attire throwing some dismania discs so yeah shout out uh beast apparel Last helped us least, put together all the shirts and uh, uh all of our um apparel all for this year West Warwick Rhode Island yep and here's uh yep. Lawrence Warwick Lawrence aka Warwick. Larry um I have uh Got to play with Larry a bunch. He comes to my putting league, and we've played together when we did the lefty events. And it's so fun because he is taking a lefty forehand route up the left side, which I have legitimately never seen before. And I just love that. I just love the play. Um, and here's yeah. uh, Rivas after his layup. He's got the alley gap, but his uh, putter turns a little, hits a tree, ends up in the stuff to the right. But this yeah. is where Larry ended up. I, I love this play. Uh and he's going to throw another forehand. He's a predominantly a forehand player, but he'll bust out some awesome backhands as well. Nate pretty much just throwing a jump putt to yeah, uh, get up into the circle. It's a great layout from Nate right there, giving himself a good opportunity to take the birdie. Um, bit of a misfire from you, Sam. Yep, I didn't love my drive, and my upshot was kind of wonky, but I'm going to tap in a birdie, so that's pretty cool. Rivas trying to run that basket, see if he can get himself a fun start. Yeah, Larry from uh, probably just inside the circle, off the front rim. Never the first putt you want, but really not a not, not huge damage. If you're going to mess up a, a shot on this hole, it's probably the last one you want to do. Absolutely, you know, taking taking a par in this hole is not is not a not not a bad play. It's everyone wants the birdie for sure, but. You know, you can bounce back from that, especially with the rest of the 17 holes we have left in store for us. Yeah, there's always the big controversy on this hole. Is it a three? Is it a four? And I like it as a four. It's, uh, it's a nice, easy birdie to start your uh, round off, but you can certainly find trouble. No one found the water, but I'd say most cards, if you play... Uh, well, I guess we had two people go left side, so... But a lot of cards will have four people go right, and at least one will end up in the water every time, so... yeah. Nate yeah, cleaning up his three, so uh, Nate and I add in a birdie as we uh, head on to hole two. Yeah, and hole two, par three, 273 feet. We're looking at a really small gap uh, here on the right side. As you can see, you kind of have to get a little tricky. And Nate here looks like he's lining up a 
righty forehand, which I think is uh, you know, just quite an interesting play. You don't often see this from a lot of people. Yeah, he's throwing a VIP harp, his little tie-dye one. It just leaves it a little inside. I actually kind of like the uh, forehand play because when you throw a backhand, you're either going to hit that back wall or just saw it off too much. I, the, the gap that the drone flew is like almost impossible. And here I go. I'm releasing it a little too inside again. Another a little bit of misfire, but getting the Daisy love and ended up nice inside the circle. I mean, that was just phenomenal. I mean, definitely saw that off a little bit, but you definitely got that Daisy love. Yeah, and here's where I was trying the putter shot, but like as you see, it just flips up, goes too straight, and hits that back wall. So, um, you know, I wouldn't call it a sucker's gap, but it is very hard to hit. You you have to have the perfect pace, perfect touch. And here's Larry, who's also going right side, and I'd say this is the more common play that I actually see work when you throw it a little too straight, and then Heiser's in that back side of the trees. I think the way the trees are, it just it just works more. And then here's Nate. He's uh, up shots a little off. He clips a tree. I'd say he's about 45. So he still has a long putt to save his par, but certainly not uh, the par putt you're looking for on a hole like this. Wow. Rivas almost ringing up that basket from what looks like 80, 90 feet. I mean, that would have been a good way to start his round. Yeah, Rivas. I got to play with him the first round. It was a hot day. We were all... uh, pretty sweaty and then you know we had the skins match the night before so for rivas and i this is like our third trip around uh you know the course in under 24 hours in some hot humid weather so uh certainly some stamina is going to play it's uh a factor in this round yeah and as far as stamina goes i mean nate hartman hitting from 50 60 feet i mean just an incredible putt you're going to see a lot of that from him uh if i if i know him pretty well he's deadly from circle two so that's uh not surprising from someone like me who's watched him play for years yeah he's got great commitment i really like his putt it's it's simple but committed and he's got great follow through he really holds his pose nicely and uh it's good putter so it's uh certainly a thing at daisy where i you know my mantra at daisy is uh miss the trees and make the putts because you know it's very unlikely you're gonna have a fully clean round some weird stuff's gonna happen you gotta roll with the gotta roll with the punches and just you know, take your opportunities where you can get them. Absolutely. Missing trees, making putts, couldn't uh, couldn't encapsulate hole three as best as you could put it. I mean, this is uh, one of the toughest holes on the course. You really have to kind of swing this gap really, uh, really wide and get a good skip out of it to give yourself a shot over to the island green. As we see you right over here catching those trees a little early, but still a couple lanes that you can take from there that could probably get you to the green. Yeah, it's like a dangerously mediocre where you uh, drive, where you feel like you kind of have to go for it, but you're not in exactly the best spot, which is which can be, uh, you know, one of the hardest parts of uh, this hole is making the decision to go for it or not. Yeah, uh, definitely agree. We have Nate here doing your textbook righty backhand, looking for a good skip. Looks like he got a decent skip. He's going to have a good lane to the to the green from there. And we have Rivas lining up the same shot. Yep, it's a uh, well. Actually, don't mind being lefty thrown forehand because you can throw a little bit of faster discs and get a, a bigger skip. But Rivas, honestly, a drive that's not quite as good is often better because now he's going to be forced to do the layup play, and that really takes uh, you know four becomes the most common score where. You know, coming this way, you never know. You think you throw a perfect shot like this, and then you hit the tree, and you end up out of bounds. So after the yeah. first two holes where I got lucky and got birdies, I thought I threw good shots, and now I've got a putt to save bogey. So we'll Yeah, it, and, you know, it, taking a bogey on this hole is not uh, not not a big issue in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, you want to you wanna try and get to the island without getting to the OB, but if you take a bogey on this hole, you can kind of move on and take care of business as the holes progress. And yeah. as we see here, you know, we got Lawrence here who's going to have to kind of do some uh, do some touchy um, flip up forehand here. These trees are a little treacherous. Yeah, well, he just watched Nate and I go out of bounds. So he's got a good a good opportunity to pick up two strokes if he can stick the green and only by a couple of feet. But he's on. Yeah. And that's uh, a sigh of relief. I'm sure he had there as he started watching that fly, thinking that it might have leaked out of bounds. 
Yep. And oh, the worst thing in disc golf, when you play the safe route and then you make the mistake anyways. That's tough. Yeah, definitely a tough break for Rivas here. Looking like he's just going to lay that up to kind of take the double bogey. Yep, and here's Nate trying to save his par from across. This is like a 40 or, you know, 50, 60 footer. I mean, I can't believe it. He ran that. That was a full committed putt out of Nate Hartman there. Yep. So now I've got a chance to save my par from, you know, I hit the tree right in front of me and rolled back. So I got to be on the island and oh. then chained right through. So, yeah, like I said, the first two holes didn't feel like I threw any good shots and got two birdies and then feel like I threw two good shots here and got a bogey. So here comes Daisy. Yeah, and that, that will do it. And that's uh, talked about a lot in the community that this uh, this course will do it to you. You'll have good days and bad days and you'll have – good shots and you'll have bad spit outs like we just saw you take there and it wasn't really that bad of a putt just a little little left side and unfortunately didn't didn't cash it for you yep but that really even or uh you know gets it a little tighter at the top as larry comes in the conversation picking up uh two strokes on nate and i Absolutely. the hole four which i think is just a phenomenal hole you know only 300 ish feet but like such cool lanes and tough green to access after you throw a good shot out the tunnel this hole's really cool i'm a big fan yeah and we would call this a, a bonus birdie on the course if you can get to the green in one here you're really taking a stroke not on the card you're taking a stroke on the field for sure and larry is going to not quite get out a little high leaked right and i'm gonna go through the left gap and absolutely throw a terrible shot but it kicks way to the left which i thought was going to be terrible but we're going to check out my lie here in a minute yeah this is uh one of one of these shots where a lot of these guys are really just focusing on trying to get through this gap and um it's hopefully they miss the tree that defines the middle of the fairway you can see nate there giving himself maybe a circle two putt there a lot of trees that are guarding that that basket so he'll probably have to do a step out there yeah, he brushed that big one in the middle, and it kind of just kept pushing him, which is a nice reaction. That tree loves to catch you and sit you down right in the middle fairway. So Rivas has got some work to do here. Yeah, Rivas, shout out. The Rivas forehand, normally you don't see that very often, but a pretty good <laughs> shot. Not bad from where he was. And we have Lawrence here going with a textbook backhand, just trying to skip into the green, save his par. Yeah, watch out, cameraman. Skipping in hot. Uh, shout out to all the camera crew that came out for this event. Uh, Zach Pepin and uh, Brad, who just really worked really hard to make sure we got the best coverage possible. Great shot from you, Sam. Phenomenal yes. touch there. Super lucky to bounce all the way onto that fairway from the white tee pad. And then, you know, being a giant is very helpful in disc golf. So, yeah, give you your weedies, kids. <laughs> giving you that extra step out that not a lot of us can access. Yeah, it's just a layup from Nate. Yep. And here's Larry with a pretty big putt. He thought he might get a stroke, but now he's got to hit one from about 35. And, and there he uh, goes. There he goes. Lawrence Warwick doing Lawrence Warwick things out here. Yep. Lefty's got a putt, man. Great putt. You know, a little left side there, but just enough where it can catch and stick right in the basket. I'm sure he's pumped about that one. That's a strong side for us, bro. And here's uh, Rivas going to tap in. So he'll take it for the lone bogey on the card. But three very different looking threes. Oh, oh, we almost did the simultaneous putt. We almost yeah, he... Maybe next hope... time. Hope to see it someday. And as we move forward, we're at hole five. Another bonus birdie that we have here on the course. Really guarded green. And as you get through the gap here, you can see that the basket is placed conveniently at the top of this rock here, which is about as textbook of a death putt, as you can imagine. A lot of these guys are going to try and lay up to the base of the hill, maybe take their par. Maybe there's a few people here that are going to try and access the green. Very tough window, uh, low ceiling. You have to really swing it hard, and hopefully you get a good skip out of it. Yeah, I, uh, I I don't even think this one's worth going for, even though it's only about 250 feet. 
It's just even if you throw the perfect drive, then you can you'll be in position to have a putt, but like it will be super dangerous no matter what you land. So I'm yeah. just going to take a little putter, turn it over, land at the base, be happy, pitch up, try to move on. But if you are going to try to go for a birdie, you're going to want to uh, throw a probably a fairway driver that gets left around the corner and then goes on the backside of the rock. That's the best place to have a putt from. And Nate is going to do that beautifully. Watch out, camera guy. As it kind of skips off the rock and then does find its way to the backside of the rock. That is such a great shot. Few inches, and that was stuck on the green, which would have been an incredible look for him. Yeah, I think the shot to actually get up on the green, you basically have to throw it into the trees uh, at the top of the gap and then somehow miss them. That, that's the only way I've seen the hole parked. Uh, but Larry, going to pitch up, wave to the crowd. You know, doing it for the fans out there. I'm going to do the same thing. Please. And here's Nate. This is where this is where your great drive lands. You got a 50 footer uphill. And if you miss, you're going back down the rock on the other side. And I love the aggressive play. Oh, I think he gets the oh, he gets the rim. And then unfortunately, that, that rolled down the hill, which is going to be a tough comebacker for him. And Rivas having a little bit of a tester putt here for his par. But yeah, this is a scary one. And that tree on the left pushes just his putt a little bit to the right, and down he goes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a classic thing that happens on this hole. If you uh, if you hit a tree early and that, that par putt gets a little testy, and, you know, unfortunately to end up taking the bogey or sometimes even a double. But good cleanup from Rivas there. Yeah, this whole average 3.27 with only a single birdie on the day. Shout out Dan Lab. Uh, I was going to look at other tournaments because I, I can almost say this this almost never gets birdied. I just think the pin position is just too daunting to really go for, but not for Dan Lab. Yeah, we make it out of hole five. We are uh, on to hole six. This is a uh, must-get birdie out here in this course. Now, the putt is a bit treacherous, but there's – a great landing zone for people to lay up here. You're going to see a lot of backhand turnovers. You're going to see some forehands. Uh, realistically, you're just trying to get through this gap, and hopefully you skip up to, uh, to the hill where you give yourself a 10, 15-foot putt. And looks like Lawrence is about a textbook drive there, maybe giving himself a 30-footer for the birdie. Yeah, that's his G-star Rhino. I know he loves throwing that disc. It's one of his favorites. I'm going to go with a little straighter mid-range. I'm actually always between discs. I never quite figure out what to throw. And I'm just going to push it slightly right side with my fuse, hit a tree, and land probably about 60 out. So no two for me. And then we got Nate Hartman here throwing a textbook backhand. Looks like that made through the gap. Oh, phenomenal shot from Nate Hartman. That should skip right up to the base of the hill, give himself a 20-footer. Yep. And here's Rivas throwing, I assume, is an MD3. He loves a little mid-range action. And how about that design of the shirt? I, I love the big beast. Absolutely. Couldn't love those uh, that, that group enough. Uh, beast apparel is excellent in what they do, and they put out phenomenal product. If you are interested, check out their website or their Facebook group. Yeah, I'm just going to take a harp, pitch it up onto the little uh, mound. And here's Rivas. Good bid, but this is what happens when you don't make the putt here. It's going to fall down the hole and roll. So yeah. he's going to have another tough putt to save his par. Here's Nate. Oh, just not quite up high enough. Great commitment. A little bit outside the circle. Thought he might have been 20 feet. Yeah, Larry with the CTP looking to catch the solo bird. Oop. And just misses it left, and hopefully he doesn't find his way behind the tree. Mm. Oh, never. The worst words in disc golf, still you, when you got to put twice in a row. Oh, yeah. And hits the front rim for the Birdogi. So, where's Rivas? He's going to put one right in the heart. There you go. Nice putt, Rivas. Great comebacker. These guys are just going to clean up their... They're pars, and looks like maybe Lawrence is taking a bogey here. Yeah, this is such a cool green, right? It is a pretty 
short hole, so you feel like you should get it, but if you don't throw the perfect drive, danger be lurking. And Nate tapping in. So at this point, we're like, man, we're not exactly killing it, but luckily the chase card was doing even worse than we were, so we were <laughs> relieved uh, for that fact. Hole 7, par 3. A uh, couple ways you can get to the green on this one. Uh, you can... Uh, go right up the left side with this little skinny gap if you're looking to throw a mid-range that goes real straight, or you can swing it out to the right side. Um, I remember when we were on this hole, uh, you were lining up a shot that I have never seen before, and uh, here I was asking you about it, and, uh, you know, to me, uh, as, a, uh, as a righty, I can't imagine this would even be a play, but can you uh, talk a little bit about uh, your history with this hole and how you how you decided this shot? Uh, well, I am almost certainly the only person who goes this route. Big out left with a big overstable forehand. I do love an overstable flex that is like my preferred release angle. And I had just been having trouble with going up this straight gap. Like I don't love the flip up and the backhand. I would end up in the OB like half the time. So uh, I'm sure it was around with Jimmy Disc Golf where we're just doing crazy stuff that I was like, hey, let's try this. And it, it well, I won't say it works every time, but it, it should. It should at least get me in bounds. And if you do overturn it and land on the right side, that is a great place to land because you have a good footing, a little downhill putt, and then the rock is right there behind you. So uh, when you execute it, it's a good place to be. And this is Rivas finding the kind of chasing Nate up that right side as well. And they're going to have like, you know, 40, 40 footers, you know, good footing downhill with the backstop behind. So it's a great place to land. Absolutely. You know, just getting through this initial gap alone gives you a really good look. There is some OB in the middle of the fairway that can make things a little tricky, but it looks like all of these guys here seem to execute the shot quite well, giving themselves putts in different locations. And as you can see right here, you're even kicking a tree. You're still giving yourself a look here. Yeah, hitting the front rim. I remember playing a practice round with uh, Larry one time and showing him that route, and he's like, oh, that's cool, and then just laces it right up the middle, just like he just did. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's probably better. And Nate Hartman cashing from circle one, circle two yeah, think, range. Yeah, I think shallow circle two. That's a great putt. Excellent putt. I mean, something that uh, we've seen a lot from him. Just a little low with Rivas there. I know he really wanted that one. Yeah, and Larry absolutely parking it off the rock. That's such an awesome place to land. Yeah. So Larry got to get himself into double digits. So I think uh, Nate and I are going to be tied at 11, and Lauren's right there at 10. So it is definitely a close battle. And it, it always is at JC. Like, you know, just, you know, if you, you, you think you're about to jump out, the course will bring you back. Couldn't so. agree more. I've played this course. This is my home course, and a lot of – people in this area this is their home course too and we're all quite familiar with um you know taking maybe three four strokes back from the lead going into the front nine and that back nine anything could happen absolutely so this whole you can pretty much throw the exact same tee shot that you just threw on uh seven but nate pulls it a little bit right again and it is definitely less forgiving this time it's yeah and right it, side field goal and an addition that uh, the the Daisy board made this year was actually making OB all in the left side, which is um, considered wetlands. So I think with that in mind, a lot of these uh, guys had to change up their game plan a little bit so they didn't fade too far left. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people, you know, if, as long as they're not throwing a super fast disc, I wouldn't say that OB comes into into play too much. It, it, you have to go past the basket and then pretty far left, which, I mean, it certainly can happen, but. Uh, Great shot from Rivas. That was a bit of a low screaming shot that got all the skip that he needed out of it, missing all those rocks on the ground. Yeah, anytime you can play the skip a daisy, you know you're doing something right, because there are uh, about 10,000 rocks on this fairway. Yeah. Larry, not too happy with that approach. He's going to have another long look to try to save his par. Nate's got a jump putt from uh, about halfway on the white fairway. He's going to get right up towards the bullseye and have an easy tap in. 
And my drive, I thought I had a good line, just a little bit too low. So we're going to try to put it in with the harp. Doesn't really work, but only about five or ten feet away. Rivas here for his birdie. Boom. There we go. Great putt, Rivas. Yeah, Rivas with the solo bird on eight. This one always feels awesome to get. I don't know about you. On this hole, I feel like when I'm hitting it, I get it you know, a bunch of times in a row, and then when you don't, it's – just so hard and it's so frustrating but. there's a there's a handful of holes at daisy that, that operate like that and this one yeah. definitely comes to mind where you could hit that gap three times in a row and then and then then it's gone for the next three months and you can't seem to find it yeah for sure and everyone's cleaning up their pars here yep and that was certainly in my mind after playing the skins match the night before and having an unbelievably hot start and then really playing pretty solid throughout the most of the round and just knowing like, oh, are we really going to do that again? And it was tough mentally to come through, but you know, here we are. We're on hole nine. And if you hadn't got a chance to check out that Daisy Land skins match on GMT, please check it out. Um, we had... Uh, Sir Simon Lazat join us for a Daisy round with Sam and Shane Wyatt and Andres Ripley. Uh, some exciting stuff on that coverage. That was super cool. And here comes Nate. He's going to throw. Pretty sure this is Destroyer. And I love the turnover play, but he gets it a little bit too much over and clunks one of the trees before it can unwind back to the basket. Yeah, the turnover forehand play is ideal for a lot of righties here if you have it. You do, like you mentioned, you don't want it to flip too much. You want a slight flip on the flight. Um, and with you as a lefty with this backhand play, it looks like it didn't really flip up for you that much, putting you in that right-hand side, which is um, almost taking the birdie away for you. Yeah, definitely no chance of birdie, but I would say I'm an expert in landing over there because that is a pretty common landing zone. No, when you're trying to throw the shot as a left-hand backhand, you want it to look like this. And so Larry launches one. Just barely misses that backside tree, but lands almost pin high inside the circle, like an absolute crush. That was an excellent drive from Lawrence Warwick. We have here Sam just laying up here. Got Rivas running the basket again, giving it a bid. Here's Nate with a long look. He's going to jump one. Big highs are pretty close. And no roll. That is uh, that is certainly a danger, especially when you hit one of the trees. And Lawrence here looks like about a 15-footer for birdie. Oop, right. Cashes it. Yeah, awesome way to end up the front nine. You know, Lawrence, I think, had the most birdies, but he also mixed it in with a couple bogeys. Yeah, absolutely. Seems like he's uh, playing a lot of birdie bogey golf here, but he's still in the mix, especially going into our back nine. And that concludes the front nine coverage of the 2023 Daisyland Open. Uh, as you can see, we have two people here with 11 down. We got Nate Hartman, yourself, Sam Henderson, 11 down going into the back nine. Lawrence Warwick, only one stroke back. Rivas uh, with six down has some work to do, but knows Daisy very well. And if you're going to get any birdies, you're going to get them on the back nine. Yep, I love the back. Back is, you know, tread water on the front and then go for it on the back. That is usually my game plan. But thank you to G GMT. Thanks for uh, everybody who's uh, stayed with us through the coverage. And hit that subscribe button and come back and watch the back nine. Absolutely. We'll be here. See you guys soon.